Welcome to an unboxing of the mid-90s internet. I do a lot of work with retro computers, so I spend a lot of time at estate sales. One thing I'm always on the lookout for are floppies, of all sizes, as they are no longer made. Oftentimes I get plastic floppy files or shoe boxes of used floppies, ones that were bought blank, and also floppies that came with software, games, applications, Windows 3.11, and so on. Sometimes I'll find a new, sealed box of blank floppies. However, it is quite rare to find sealed software, and that's why I'm making a video. I got my hands on how the early internet access was distributed on floppies. In the early days of the internet, it was common to get online through a BBS, a bulletin board service. It was all text-based, and you could use a standard terminal emulator to communicate with a central computer. You could message other users, upload and download files. There were some forums and games. And if you were lucky, that BBS server might also have an internet connection. And you could use a text mode browser running on the BBS server to get on the actual internet. Proper IP communications were almost exclusively the domain of businesses, academia, and government. Skip forward to the early 90s and personal computers started going graphical just as the internet gained popularity. Three companies emerged as big players to provide service in this new market. America Online, CompuServe, and Prodigy. They provided a captive portal similar to the BBS systems but it was graphical, and they would have embedded browsers that would let you get on the real internet outside their walled garden. It was competitive, and there were many other smaller services that nipped at their heels. Together they drove, or sometimes chased, innovation on the early internet. Part of their marketing was to litter floppies with their sign-up software, packaging promising free minutes, hours, or months, all over any place that tech-inclined customers might end up. Usually computer or office supply stores, but before it was all over, they were in grocery and big box retailers too. It was a godsend for youngsters like myself at the time, a source of free floppies. Sure, it was one at a time, you know, unless no one was looking, but I was a good boy and surely never did any such thing. So that is what I have for you today. I was at an estate sale, I got a double-wide floppy box, and stuffed in it, I found a stack of unopened mid-90s internet floppies. Mostly AOL, but Prodigy and CompuServe, and the lesser-known Genie. The G and the E in capitals, as it was a subsidiary of General Electric. And now I'm going to open them for you. It seems only right, finding something sealed up new that's now uncommon to document and share it with those of you interested. So let's start with the America Online here. Brand new version 3.0. This doesn't say a version. Neither does this. Let's just start with the big ones. So the uh, thicker padded cases, mailers. See the address here? These thin ones, no address. These probably came in a box inside on the end of a shelf. These were probably mailed as unsolicited spam. But just big enough to just released. There you go. AOL for Windows version 3.0. Right protected. Some of these would have this 
uh, permanently molded to right protect so that you couldn't just use them as a source of free floppies. That didn't work out well. Here's another one just like it. This is a different version. So this is version 3. Let's see what version this is. Now if we can just find a 1.0, we'll have a complete set or something like it. So these had the registration for the free uh, 10 hours on the outside, but the mailer on the inside. So you couldn't just write them all down, wait for someone else to try and activate it. Yeah, they, these were probably at the end of a supermarket checkout or something. Let's see. Version 1.1. 1. 1. Hey. 1.1, 1. 1, 2, 3. Oh, this is another version 2. But the... Uh, kiosk format packaging. Is your America Online Windows software missing? Need DOS or Macintosh format? No problem. Call 1-800-827-6364 for a replacement. Wonder if that's even AOL anymore. If AOL is even AOL anymore. This is probably one of the earlier ones because it's now available for 9600 BPS, which I think is the slowest I ever connected at back in the day. This is a mailer in the flimsy paper format. Here we are. Use, just use this software to try America Online for free. And this is again version 1.1. Next up is CompuServe. I just realized this is actually already open. Let's take a look at inside anyway. What can Compu what can you do on CompuServe? Only $9.95 a month. WinSim version 1.4, CompuServe Information Manager for Windows, March 1995. Unlimited access for $9.95 a month. I believe, if I remember right, CompuServe did that first, and then everyone else had to chase them on that. Because for the longest time it was minutes and then hours. I think CompuServe was the first one to go monthly. Here we go, Prodigy. package. 
By opening this package, you agree that the Prodigy software and each revised version is licensed to you solely for use in accessing the Prodigy service. Before they were click through, end user license agreements were printed on packaging. Prodigy version 1.1 for Windows. Let's see what the genie looks like when we let it out of the lamp. Oh, genie version 1.2 for Windows 3.1. Use this code to get up to $150 worth of free services by December 31st, 